So I finally got to try HD Zero. Let's talk about it. When I first got into flying, I started out with a pre-built drone that had the DJI 03 air unit in it, and I liked it a lot. But over the course of time, I made it a goal of mine to at least try every video system to see which one I liked the most. Which led me to building my first drone with the Walksnell Moonlight system, trying the Avatar HD Mini Lite on the Mobula 8, and even trying analog on the YMZ FPV Lightning 2. But now the time has come. I finally have HD Zero goggles and I've built my first drone around the HD Zero system. The frame that I went with was the Axis Flying Monta SE. It's a newer frame, it's a squashed X. And if you've seen my DJI to walk snail videos, it should be no surprise that I went with this frame because I like the quality of Axis products. And it was actually pretty cheap as far as frames go. It's about $40 and it comes with everything. So that's dope for someone like me who doesn't have a 3D printer. I went with Zing 2 motors because I love the way they fly, I love how powerful they are, and I've flown them before on my Nazgul, so familiarity was there for me as well. For the stack, I chose the Speedy B F4 V3. I know there's a V4 version, and I know this stack has had issues, but I decided to roll the dice and pray I didn't get a shitty one, so <laughs> fingers crossed, everything's been good so far. I flashed Blue Jay to the ESC for the first time, which is a new thing for me to do, but a very easy thing for me to do. And I got to choose some new startup music. The frame comes with a buzzer, but buzzers that come with pre-builts and frames usually suck because when the battery ejects, they don't work. So I ended up replacing that buzzer with a V-Fly Finder 2, which is awesome. It's loud. If the battery ejects, it'll still work. And I also use that on my other build. And it really makes finding your drone in tall grass so much easier because you don't want to spend 45 minutes looking for a drone in a big field. And of course, the HD Zero Freestyle V2 with the Nano 90 camera. I replaced the antenna that came with the VTX with a UFL to SMA adapter and then bought a separate SMA antenna. I'm not sure how I feel about this yet and I might replace it with a shorter antenna. It's a little annoying having to bend the antenna back after crashes and whatnot and there's not really any 3D printed options for the stock antenna, at least for my frame. So it is what it is, we ball. And when we mix all that up, sugar, spice, and everything nice, we come up with this fabulous flying blender right here. And last but not least, the HD Zero goggles with True RC patch and stubby antennas. Now right off the bat, something that I like about HD Zero is being able to just plug it right into a flight controller that has a DJI connection. After watching Joshua Barwell's video about having to change the pin out on the connector, I was fully prepared to be aggravated for about 40 minutes. But luckily that didn't pan out like I thought because they've actually fixed that and you could just plug it right into the DJI connector. And the VTX is actually smaller and lighter than I thought it would be. It's just a little bit different when you actually have it in your hands versus when you see people review it, I guess. And I'm actually happy it was on the smaller side because if it was any other VTX, I'm almost positive it wouldn't have fit inside the frame with everything else that I have in there. The Monta SC is actually very compact in comparison to the other drones that I have, so it took a lot of finagling to really make sure I fit everything in there properly. So if you get this frame, plan accordingly. As far as actual flight is concerned, I definitely feel more connected to the drone, like I am the drone, <laughs> and is definitely more responsive than walk snail at the expense of video quality, duh, but I actually don't mind. A big part of it could also be the fact that I tune the drone a lot better and I understand the feed forward slider and the feed forward boost a little bit more this time around. And of course, being that the VTX came with the Nano 90 camera, I've been flying mostly in 540p 90fps mode. My initial thought after taking off for the first time was, this reminds me of analog, but a little bit better. And I'm sure the best analog system that you could buy would probably give this a run for its money, but having a digital system with super low fixed latency for the price of around 150 some odd dollars is great in my opinion. And with how easy this was to stick to the frame and plug in, I'm not as worried about trashing it like I am my other video systems. And it's one watt capable, so you're getting improved range and penetration if you unlock the VTX. As for the goggles, although they are heavier than what I'm used to, 
I do like them, they are really nice. And the wider faceplate fits my facial structure very, very well, so that's a plus. And they're versatile. The scroll wheel is a nice change from the Goggles X5 position switch thingy that I absolutely can't stand. And the fans. My eyes have never been more air conditioned in my life. <laughs> it's great. But in general, the HD0 system has opened me up to a whole new world of being able to get into many, many more micro drones and tiny whoops. So that's awesome. So what pissed me off? It has by far the most annoying, shitty update process of anything I have ever done in my life. Holy shit. Why on God's green earth did they make this updating process so fucking complicated? Why? And why if I want to make the process of updating and unlocking my VTX easier, I have to buy a freaking almost $30 programmer just to make my life easy? Why? 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 The next thing I'm not really a fan of is having to use the stick commands to change the camera and VTX settings. It's convenient, which I appreciate, but I'm used to making all those changes in my goggles. But I guess I have to go back to my roots of putting together and remembering PlayStation 1 cheat codes in order to get things done. <laughs> I know I'm roasting HD0 right now, but I genuinely like the system. I really do. Having easy access to Betaflight is nice as well, however I don't know how much use I'm going to get out of that being that I have the Speedy B app on my phone that's integrated with Betaflight and I just use that all the time, so we'll see. Another thing that's more of a nitpick by me is that there's not really any ready-made VTX antenna mounts unless you purchase a specific frame where someone has been kind enough to put the print file for it online. And yes, you can get around this by using an SMA connection. However, I'm not sure how reliable and how durable that's going to be over the long term, especially since I crash a lot. The last nitpick I have is the way the image breaks up when you're losing signal. It's not terribly bad, but I do prefer the way analog looks when there's image breakup. I'm not sure why, it's just more visually appealing. It's probably my inner boomer. Now, if you're thinking, why would you get this instead of the 04 and just use race mode for freestyle and get all the other benefits, you have a decent argument if price isn't a concern. You could potentially just get the 04 Pro, which is pretty expensive in comparison to the HD0 Freestyle V2, or even get the 04 Lite and throw that on a micro frame. The 04 version is going to cost around $230, maybe more now because of tariffs, taxes, and shipping. And on top of that, the smart thing to do would be to get DJI Care if you're purchasing straight from the DJI website. And that goes for about $25 to $50 some odd dollars. So now you're close to $300 just for the 04 alone. And that's assuming you already have the Goggles 3 anyway to even use race mode plus everything else that you need to build a drone. But then the other side of that is DJI Care will provide more support and typically break fix services if the 04 air unit should get damaged in any way, while HD0, at least according to their warranty, won't. But with DJI, you can expect to have to upgrade your goggles every few years or so just to be current with the latest and greatest air units. And there's typically no guarantee of backwards compatibility between goggles and any new air unit that comes out. So there's just a little bit more to consider when it comes to choosing between these two systems. I know the most typical things people look for are video quality and latency, but Warranty can be just as important to some people, at least in my opinion. But if you race or you're looking for a cheaper way to get into digital and you mainly fly analog or even vice versa, HD0 is definitely the way to go for sure. It's no puzzle, it's been out a while. Or if you don't want to spend top dollar for DJI, Walksnail is definitely where you want to be if you want to have a better digital experience than HD0 can offer. But overall, I really like HD0. I feel more confident when I fly and I'm definitely going to be building more drones around it in the future and even getting into more micros. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Is HD0 your daily driver? Do you use it for freestyle or racing? Do you think HD0 sucks? I'd love to read your thoughts. Thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe. Catch you later.